Right, so in the box you will find your little box, which is a lot smaller than people think. It's probably 10 centimeters by 15 centimeters. That's very compact. Uh, you also have a couple of these USB leads, which are apparently very nice quality. You know, usual Chinese stuff, but pretty decent. They are micro USB here. And it always also comes with this adapter, micro to mini USB, which I'm not going to be using because my Ender 3 is the version 2, which is already the micro input. But if you have an older one, you might need this. So it also comes with this leaflet, which is usual, as usual, Chinese and English instructions. Instructions are a little bit confusing, but yeah, it does the trick tells you what to do. I've already downloaded the apps and added that in my um, app. So that should be pretty straightforward. Just scan the QR code and you should have that done. I'll see if I can reset and do that again to show you. So yeah, that's pretty simple. So here in the back, you will have an ethernet connection to a USB port and the power supply port. Uh, I'm not going to be using their lead because I do have a, an external power supply which matches exactly what they need 2.4 amps, 5 volts. So I'm going to be using that and my, I don't have an extension right now so the, the setup will be a little bit you know, funny. But it should be as simple as plugging this into the USB port. So, there we go. It says it doesn't matter if it's USB 1 or 2, I'm doing USB 1. I'm not going to be using the Ethernet because I'm going to use the Wi-Fi, but it should be capable of handling wired connection as well. And the other end just goes into your printer. Okay, I'm going to do that off camera because I might need two hands to do that. All right, so come back in a minute. There you go. So this is all wired. I'm flipping that upside down just because of the way my connections here. Um, important, I just formatted one of the micro SD cards and inserted here, format to FAT32 as indicated in the instructions and you shouldn't have any problem. So let's power this up and see how it goes. In the instructions he says when yellow light is blinking it means the block has started to work so let's wait for it to blink start blinking I'm gonna power the printer and there you go start to blinking that's a good sign I guess launching the app uh, as I told you already scan the QR code so you need to create a login and scan the QR code that should be pretty straightforward uh, it came up with a message about wireless connection or uh, wired connection just pick whichever you prefer first put the the password and and the ID for your network and that should be up and running so First, I'm going to be using the app, so just bear with me. Trying to see what it does. Devices. There you go. This is where you, you pick. You see, you go to device and add there, and you should have that one selected. It seems to be the main interface. Right, so. This is the first time I'm opening the app, so bear with me. I'm not really familiar with that, so looks like we've got models here. And as you can see, that's a good, interesting print. Um, a few things here. Don't know where. It's probably from the cloud. I 
let's see, the very simple one. So the calibration cube, as usual, very simple, easy to you know, follow and slice, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Uh, all right. Don't know what this means, but I guess this might be the slicer. This might be painter. There you go. And so uh, this looks like the slicer. So if we can finish that. Yeah, it zooms in. Looks pretty basic, but for the calibration cube shouldn't be too complicated. Here at the bottom you'll see device, which I've already set up previously, that's under 2v2. Well, it looks like it is compatible with most of the reality printers, that's good. And let's turn transform, as usual, gas scale, rotation reset, filament. Custom PLA ABS, let's see, custom device. Yeah, uh, it's just a diameter, it doesn't do much. Yeah, as I, as I told you, the, the app doesn't seem to be like the, the most responsive and, and the brightest one, but let's see how it prints. Quality, yeah. Linear height, I'm not going to be doing to normal 0 0.2, line width 0 0.0, which is my nozzle, so I'll, I'll leave it that way. Just uh, shell, usual shell configurations, I'm not going to mess with that now. No. Infill, there we go. Drop this to save a little bit of time, maybe. Hmm. Doesn't show what I'm typing. Yeah. Don't know if it's the app or my phone, but as you can see, it doesn't respond very well. Material again, printing temperature, I'll leave it like that. Speed, yeah, it's fine. I don't be bothering. Travel, retraction, seems a lot from a printer. A bit more than what I usually do, but it's fine. It's a test print. Support, yeah, support. it's probably going to be a mess to work here with. Uh, the phone, but well, you know, sometimes you're, you're printing easy stuff, it's difficult just to control it. Even with two fingers, you don't you know, move it very well. But yeah, I'll leave it like this. We don't need supports for the calibration cube, adhesion, skirt, that's why. Yeah, why? Okay, oh, it looks okay. Let's give it a go. Slice. There we go, that shows your slicing. There we go. Click and print. That's alright. See how it goes. Right, just before we start printing, let us see if everything is working. Just some simple remote control fans. Looks alright. Changing the nozzle temp, put 200. Yeah, update the screen. Yeah, it started to increase now. I'm gonna put it closer here so you can see. The bed set to 55. Should update right there. 
Yeah, seems to be okay, seems to be controlling. Let's hit print. Okay, print. Choose device, under 3v2. Warning, please make sure, blah, 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 okay. Nothing on screen yet. See the settings are still what we configure a few minutes ago. Oh, starting to home. screen doesn't seem to update still showing the home screen if you look here and to be honest there is a warning in the app saying that the scroll button shouldn't work during the print so I think that's normal I've just changed filament so I'm not sure if it's gonna be purging very well interesting see the purge line is not Aligned to what I'm used to see, so I guess there's something wrong in the G code settings for the bed dimensions. Yeah, same for the skirt, it doesn't seem to be in the center of the bed, but doesn't matter too much, seems to be flowing filament through the nozzle. Yeah, it looks like a calibration cube. Right, so I'm upstairs now. I'm gonna be changing settings mid print just to see if it works. I know this PLA is fine printing at 190. Yeah, it looks like it received that. Let's see if the temperatures start updating. There you go, it's dropping. Yeah, a little bit of undershoot, but it should be picking up again. Yeah, it doesn't have the octoprint plots, but hopefully that will be included in the next releases. Okay, so yeah, it seems to be still printing. Three layers out of 133. a little bit here 50 should be fine okay yeah seems to be working Changes mid print, that's good. Hi, quick mid print update. So I've been upstairs using my phone, and as I launched the app again, it's showing busy. Click here, see what this means. So, yeah, it seems to be printing, you know, 49 layers out of 133 still 22 minutes to go let's see how it's looking like yep still printing still the same settings come back in a few minutes all right so I didn't get any warning I was expecting to have a warning or something uh, it might be have it I might have it disabled in my, my phone, I'll check that later, but when I open the app, this is the message I've got. 
printing is completed, you can view it in my print list. And I think it's still connected if I check the nozzle temperature. Yeah, seems to be still connected. It's dropping. That's nice. Not bad. There's not much, like I said, the app seems to be quite basic for now, but hopefully there will be some development. Uh, where is that my printing list? Contents. There you go, completed. Shows roughly what it should look like. Don't know why. Dimensions doesn't seem to be right. Like I said, I did five minutes slicing in the phone, which is really basic. So yeah, this is pretty much all the settings you can adjust in the slicer. So I'm definitely not gonna be using this for more complex and more intricate prints. But yeah, it does the job. I'll see how it handles. Um, a big G code from Cura, for example. I'll keep you updated. Right, so let's check the print. Yeah, so the print is complete and uh, slightly different than usual. So that's probably the G code generated on the app. So I usually have the printer bed showing off the print. So fully advanced instead of fully protected, but there it is. Yeah. Cool now, but out. yeah, like I said, five minutes job in the app slicer, which is not too bad, but yeah. Not a perfect cube, but it does the job. So, like I said, I'm probably gonna be doing that in a Cura. The bundle, bundle extrusion here at the top. Yeah. I'll check again with the G, a proper G code and see how it works. But so far, nothing to complex right one uh, interesting thing that I've noticed is that the printer or the PSU and you know the main board fans and stuff are still controlled by the the main switch so but the screen seems to still be alive if I don't kill the box so I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about so I'm killing the normal switch there you see the fans and everything quiet fine screen still alive box is still alive and it will only goes down if I power the box off. screens down now so I don't know if there is a way to remotely kill the uh, the box I'm gonna be digging into that later hopefully there is so we can stop the whole printer <laughs> 